The first step to hide any geocache is to make sure that you're ready. I'm good to go. Let's hide this thing. Boom! Hidden! Slow down there, champ. Hiding a geocache takes time and commitment so that geocachers can find it for years to come. A good way to gain experience is by finding more geocaches. Finding about 100 geocaches before your first hide will help you figure out what you like and don't like and gather some great ideas. Woo! I know so much more now. What's next? Next up, let's find a spot that's right for your geocache. What about right here? This spot looks pretty cool. Apparently, you're not the only one who had that idea. Geocaches have to be at least a tenth of a mile away and in a place where geocaches are allowed. How about this tree nook? It's safe, easily accessible, and perfect for a geocache. It looks like a great spot, but your container is a little lacking. What we have here are a few examples of great geocache containers. Whatever you choose should be durable, waterproof, and well labeled. Add a logbook and you're good to go. Hmm, decisions, decisions. After you make your pick, we'll go hide it. When placing your geocache, make sure you get accurate coordinates, take note of the difficulty and terrain ratings, and remember your geocache's size. Then you're ready to plug it all in on geocaching.com. All right, I put in all the info and wrote a pretty sweet description. And don't forget to add a helpful hint. Got it. Now what? Now you send it in for review. Review? By who? Hi. A community volunteer, someone like me, will take a look at your geocache's details and see if it fits within the guidelines and if everything looks good, it will be published. Awesome, thanks. Then what? Then it's just keeping your geocache in tip-top shape and enjoying all of the geocaching love that rolls in. There's plenty more to learn about hiding a geocache. Just click the link to learn more. And if you want to find the geocache that I just hid, here's the GC code.